Now what if you want to calculate the moment around some other axis? We keep doing axes around the center of mass, but there are other axes out there. Right? So let's think about our AOL disk here again, so a little uniform disk. And we calculated the moment around an axis through the center, kind of like that. But now, you may want to calculate the moment around the edge, like that. Well, you can imagine that would be a much harder calculation because you got this thing moving around and all the elements are at different distances, very difficult. Have I got a theorem for you? We've got something for you called the parallel axis theorem. People don't like it, but once you know how to use it, you're going to love it. All right? So basically it says that for the moment around an axis parallel, hence the name, to an axis through the center of mass, the center of mass, we have the following relationship. The moment through the parallel axis that you want is equal to the moment through the center of mass, the ones that we've been calculating, the ones in tables, plus you just have to add to it md squared, where d is the separation between the two axes. So let's draw it real quick for a, a, a disk so you can see what I'm talking about, right? So here is that thin disk again, like that, and we calculated its moment around that axis, which went through its center of mass. That was key to go through the center of mass, to go through the, the or to put the origin there, that made the whole integral work out. Right? That's why the integral was so easy. So now you want to rotate it about this point. So your axis has to go through the edge, but also it has to be parallel to the other axis, right? So this is your parallel axis. We want I here. This is ICM. And then D is just a separation of the two axes, right? So in this case, we would say the I parallel, the one we want, is the I through the center of mass, which is 1 half MR squared. Uh, where we have this thing has radius r and mass m, plus just m, m is just m, and then the separation in this case just happens to be r, right? Because we have one going through the center of the disk and one going through the edge, so they're different by r. So it's actually in this case plus m r squared, so it's three halves m r squared. So if you want to do a quick check, you could say should it be bigger or smaller? It should be bigger because you have the mass more of the mass moving farther away. More of the mass moving farther from the axis than here, where the mass is at a set distance, different distances from the axis. So that makes sense. Now one thing I want to make clear is it's not always the case that you'll get a simple short answer like this, because you don't have to be a separation equal to r. I could say I want to move this around this axis, and then my separation wouldn't be equal to anything. It wouldn't be equal to r, it's just some number. I could call it l. And if I did that, the answer would be i parallel 2. i parallel 2 would be 1 half mr squared plus, well, just ml squared. Right? You can't combine it with r and get some nice, short, simple little formula. You just get that.